Hello my friends, today we are going to a state that is said to be the poorest in the United States to see how farming and livestock work here. In recent years, agriculture has been the number one industry in Mississippi with a value of about $9.7 billion each year. The value of the state's agricultural sector is three times lower than that of Texas and six times lower than that of California. According to USDA statistics, in 2022, there are 34,000 active farms in Mississippi and the state's farmlands total land area is 10.4 million acres, accounting for 35% of the state's land area. Currently, most of Mississippi's agricultural area is concentrated in the Mississippi River Delta region. The river is considered the most important river for US agriculture because up to 92% of the country's agricultural exports are transported through this river. Currently, the most popular agricultural products in Mississippi are cotton, peanuts, eggs, catfish, and corn. In addition, in Mississippi, 19.2 million acres of land are used for forestry and generate $1.3 billion in annual value. We are currently on a 314 acre catfish farm east of Mississippi. In the past 40 years, Mississippi has always been the state with the largest catfish production in the United States. This is also a commodity that contributes greatly to the agricultural value of the state. At around 7 a.m. each day, thousands of pounds of pellet feed are pumped into the pond to feed the millions of catfish. The main ingredient in the feed used for catfish is small fish meat mixed with soybean flour. According to USDA statistics, in 2022, there are 205 active catfish farms in Mississippi, with a total land area of 34,000 acres. On top of that, up to 85% of catfish farms are located in the plains, and the remaining 15% are located in the central east region of the state. Currently, most varieties of catfish farmed in Mississippi require at least 18 months to be ready for harvest, when the weight of each catfish is about 1.3 to 1.8 pounds. When the catfish harvest takes place, these workers will use nets to catch the fish. Then millions of fish will be loaded onto trucks and transported to the factory for processing. According to the USDA report, by 2022, in Mississippi, 78.1 million catfish were harvested, with a total weight of around 388 million pounds, accounting for 67% of the catfish production in the United States. Not only are catfish raised on farms, Mississippi farmers also catch hundreds of thousands of catfish each year in the Mississippi River. An estimated 770,000 catfish living in the Mississippi River are caught each year. This is what goes on inside a catfish processing plant. The catfish industry in Mississippi creates about 17,000 regular jobs and the value of catfish farms is around $221 million. This is a bison farm in the city of Tupelo, northeastern Mississippi, home to nearly 90 purebred bison. 
bison is said to have appeared in Mississippi land in the 17th century. Till now, the number of bison in this state has decreased by about 87% from that time. Unlike other herds of cattle, the bison here only grazed on the pasture right next to the farm and have a protective fence instead of being taken to pastures a few miles away from the farm. In a US Department of Agriculture investigation in 2021, there are 37 active bison farms in Mississippi with a total population of 4,300, of which the largest bison farm has about 175 individuals and is located in the eastern part of the state. Each year, between 350 and 400 bison are born on farms in Mississippi, and about 3% of them usually die shortly after birth. Newborn bison calves weigh about 55 pounds, about 30% more than bison caught in the wild. Young bison will need to live in a barn for about three days before they are strong enough to follow their mother into the pasture and they will be weaned after about six to seven months. Currently, most bison farms in Mississippi operate for the purpose of harvesting meat. Despite being a state with a relatively limited number of bison, the quality of bison meat in Mississippi is always appreciated. Of course, it's not appreciated as much as bison meat raised in Montana. As an adult, a female bison usually weighs on average around 970 pounds, while the bull bison often weigh up to 1800 pounds, and each day they need an amount of food equivalent to 5% of their body weight. Basically, raising bison doesn't take as much care as cattle or sheep. Instead, farmers just need to provide enough nutrition for them and vaccinate them annually. About 870 bison are slaughtered each year in Mississippi. Meanwhile, the number of bison slaughtered each year across the country is about 19,000. The Mississippi bison industry provides approximately 3,700 jobs and generates around $137 million in revenue each year. Meanwhile, the cattle industry in the state brings in about $318 million in annual revenue. According to USDA statistics in 2020, the states with the largest number of bison raised in the United States are South Dakota with 86,000 head, followed by Nebraska with 23,000, and Mississippi ranks 16th on this list. Goodbye Bison Farms. We're going to Mississippi egg farms to see how farmers here harvest 1.4 billion eggs a year. During the past six years, Mississippi has always ranked 10th in the list of states with the most broilers and ranks 13th out of the states that produce the most eggs. Currently, there are 1,237 broiler farms and 115 egg laying farms in operation in Mississippi. The chicken industry in the state brings in about $3.8 billion in revenue each year. It is also the largest revenue generating industry in Mississippi's agricultural sector. In Mississippi, most eggs are collected from free-range chicken farms. Therefore, although egg production in this state is much less than in other states, the quality of eggs here is always appreciated and the prices are about 25% better than factory farms.
when it comes to Mississippi's agriculture, we cannot ignore wild boars. According to estimates by the Mississippi State of Agriculture and Commerce, there are about 515,000 wild boars living in the state. Every year, hundreds of thousands of wild boars in Mississippi cause agricultural losses of about $7.3 million. And there are always big problems that any farmer has to worry about when they intend to cultivate crops. In 2018, about 25,000 wild boars were hunted in Mississippi. Until 2019, when it was learned that hunting wild boar in the state was quite easy. The number of hunters flocked here more in that year, and 308,000 wild boars were exterminated. However, with its extremely fast reproduction and good adaptability, the wild boar population in Mississippi has always remained high and they always have been a big problem for the state's crops. Hello my friends, today we will continue to the fields and large farms of Texas to see how farming and ranching work in this state. With 127 million acres of land used for agriculture, Texas is not only famous for its cattle herds and vast cotton fields, but also the state's agricultural sector is also known for large-scale dairy farms, peanut fields, or horse farms with up to hundreds of creatures. According to USDA statistics, by 2022, there are 247,800 farms in operation in Texas, an increase of nearly 500 farms when compared to 2021. Currently, up to 97% of farms in Texas are family farms, which means most of the farms and ranches here are organized as a partnership or family company. We are currently on a goat farm in Edwards County, Southwest Texas. Every year on this farm, about 215 baby goats are born and about 35% of them are male. Like dairy farms, most of the male goats on this farm will be sent to slaughterhouses shortly after birth because in the dairy industry, male goats are of no value. To qualify for milk production, the goats here need to reach about 13 to 15 months of age, which is when the female goats began their first breeding season. Currently, the most common ingredients used to make fodder for dairy goats are hay, alfalfa, forage and cereals. In addition, fresh grass is also used about four times per week to enrich the diets of hundreds of goats on this farm. According to USDA statistics, in 2022, Texas ranks third in the list of states with the most dairy goats in the United States, with about 29,000 heads distributed on 74 farms. The two leading positions in the list of states with the most dairy goats in the United States are Wisconsin with 44,000 and California with 41,000. Currently, milking on most dairy goat farms is done four to six weeks after spawning. This is also the period where the female goats bring the highest milk production Milking for each goat will be done twice a day, and each milking is about 12 hours apart. Goats are well cared for, both physically and mentally, typically yielding about 6 to 7 pounds of milk per day, and goat milking usually lasts 280 to 300 days, depending on the breed. Each year, the United States produces about 735 million pounds of goat milk, 
and 7.6% of goat milk is produced on farms in Texas. In addition to goats and cattle, Texas agriculture is also known for raising chickens and raising quails for eggs. Here's what's going on at a quail incubator in the town of Panhandle, North Texas. Here, this worker is loading tens of thousands of quail eggs into the incubator and the new batch of quails will hatch in 17 days. Newly hatched quails are about half the size of chicks. In the wild, they are the preferred prey of carnivores such as wildcats, foxes or rats. Baby quail cages need lights to keep warm and they will stay here for three weeks before moving to another place. According to statistics in 2021, in the United States, there are about 185 quail farms in operation and 27 of them are in Texas. Most quails are raised in Texas for the purpose of egg production in addition, there are also a few arms that combine egg production and white quail meat production. Basically, quail egg farms are designed and operated quite like large-scale chicken farms. After about two months of age, the female quail begins to lay eggs. With a nutritious diet, each female quail can lay between 250 and 300 eggs per year. It is estimated that about 1.2 billion quail eggs are produced in the United States each year, and the majority of quail eggs are consumed in the domestic market. In recent years, China has always been the country with the largest quail egg production in the world, with about 184 billion eggs produced per year accounting for 37% of the world quail egg production. Goodbye ranchers, we'll go to the forests of Texas to see how the process of planting and harvesting thousands of pine trees happens. December to February each year is usually the time when pine tree planting takes place in pine producing forest areas. Due to the uneven terrain, the planting of pine trees in most areas is done manually. These workers will plant a minimum of 650 trees per acre, and the maximum number per acre is approximately 800 trees. Currently, there are 49 different types of pine in the United States, of which Oriental White Pine is the most common species, and this is also the pine species with the highest economic value. According to statistics from the US Forest Service in 2022, in Texas there are about 63 million acres of land covered by forests in which pine is the most grown tree, with more than 13 million acres, accounting for 21% of the state's forest area. The time from planting to when pine trees are eligible for harvest usually lasts from 15 to 20 years, depending on the variety and purpose of use. The older the pine forest, the more economic value they bring. Currently, the majority of pine trees in Texas are harvested when they are 25 to 30 years old, and once harvested, millions of pine logs are shipped to factories to produce furniture, floors, panels, roofing, or paper production.
The next place we visit is the Sorghum Field in Deaf Smith County, west of Texas. Between July and October each year, the sorghum harvest takes place in most of the eastern fields in Texas. For many years now, Texas has always been the second largest producer of sorghum in the United States with about 2.15 million acres, followed by Kansas in first place with 3.2 million acres. Each year, Texas farmers harvest about 51 million bushels of sorghum and it collects about $315 million in cash. In addition, the sorghum related industries generate approximately $1.3 billion in revenue for Texas.